Hello and welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Reacts as we are working our way through Radiohead's The Bends. And yeah. we are at track nine, which is, Mr. Seddon? Bulletproof, I wish I was. Or bulletproof, dot dot dot, I wish I was. Aha. Um, so obviously what we've had so far, you know, there was that little bit of a lull near the beginning for me, but it had the album has very much picked back up. Uh, for me, so I'm hoping that the this trend does carry on through the back end of the album. I think this might be a lull, um, <laughs> but but I think it's going to be um, interesting when we get to the end of the album because you know one of the reasons for um, sometimes focusing on an album is to have that as a, a singular product. So we've said like sometimes in a singular song you have your rises, your falls, your peaks, your troughs, your changes of mood and i do wonder like when we get to the end how it kind of knits together even with songs that you might not have been so like um enamored with how it knits together as an album um but i i'm gonna cut into the uh to, to the vid as quick as possible and we'll pick up afterwards only because and, and, and i'll tell you the audience and, and and chris unfortunately has had to to know this I've got quite heavy hay for you at the moment, so I'm trying to cut my words down to minimum at the moment so that you don't get a snotty, gargly mess coming out of me at any point. So let's become bulletproof. Actually, yeah. Would bulletproof help me with hay fever? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, let's go.
Yes. No adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Such a victory. Uh, for those that don't do things like this, where you're trying to do this, uh, um, so easy to run into adverts, so difficult to uh, do it perfectly. That's why I celebrate whenever I don't uh, get an advert run. Right. Bulletproof. <laughs> Bulletproof. Um, Sorry. For one of the slower ones, um, and the sort of low end, lower energy ones, this isn't that bad. Um, I think musically helps this one than some of the other ones we've had, where the guitar and stuff is sort of it's more entwined with what he's singing. It's not like he's trying to use his vocals in a different way sort of against the the music the musicality of the song so it sits nicer in that way um lyrically you know if he wants to be bulletproof and you know doesn't like people and does you know is very much a fuck it if you don't like me shoot me whatever i'm bulletproof um but it, it, really it, he's it, not bulletproof because it really does affect him but he doesn't yeah. show that and it's certainly a big um theme on the album isn't it like we've we've talked in a lot of the other songs about uh a, a lot of the lyrics leaning into the the pressures that come with and i'm going to say not just fame but i think more specifically the pressures that come with yeah and also kind of his reaction and where he is in his mind state at this point. And uh, I, I think this one even more so leans into the him rather than necessarily the, uh, the pressures of creep, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that kind of idea of, um, I wish I was bulletproof. So I wish that all of the pressures that I'm feeling or, or the things, the anxieties, everything that is getting to me, I wish I didn't, but as you say, I kind of need to recognise that I'm wishing I was, and I'm yeah. not. You know, like th these things are impacting me, and this is this is the way I'm going to express. You know, we often talk about um, people needing to talk, and um, people needing to be um, more open with how they are feeling at the time. And this almost feels like that cathartic song of going, I, uh, 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 this is where I'm at. Mm. I don't I don't necessarily want you to solve it for me. I just want you to know that this is how I am feeling and the whole circle of how I'm feeling. The what I what I wish I could do with this and what I can actually do. Even even if externally I might look like I'm fine, I'm not fine. I wish I was fine. Um yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, the <sighs> Go back to where we sort of started on this album or where we started when we started talking about Radiohead and that idea of um, um, depressing. I, I think that's... It's songs like this that have always struck me as um, the opposite of that. As in, it talks about these things, but... Uh, and maybe it's just how it sits with me. I don't find it depressing because it's talked about openly. And... It's in, yeah. The thing is, with... I mean, the, the problem is with Radiohead and the depression thing is because how Tom sings and especially when we get to later albums and like no surprises and things like that it's just that quite at times slightly monotony sort of cathartic sort of ness of it that makes people think that it is yeah very yeah. depressive Whereas, obviously, with this, if this was a punk band singing this song, using the same lyrics, same arrangement, but just doing it in like a, in pop punk style or something, people would be going, oh, this is a really positive song about how to deal with mental health. Yeah. But because of the preconception of Tom York's vocals and how he, how he sings, plus because this is musically it is quite dour you know it, it's a it said it's a really cool guitar piece that that he's playing 
but it is a quite dour guitar piece. It, it, you know, it, doesn't... it is odd though, isn't it? Like we've said this on other videos about how certain things hit with you. Both of you can be hearing the same thing at the same time and it hit differently because I don't get dour out of this. I get, I get maybe melancholy and, and often I get that out of his voice as well, but mm. and very beautiful for me. Like I don't get the dour in it. I get the, um, yeah, it just hits differently for me. And, and, and you know, maybe that's kind of the truth of it is you know, things will hit, but, but, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's a positive um, um, piece of music, but um, and what what I think really helps it musically, and why I I love the lyrics of this song. I love his delivery of it, and I do love the guitar bit. Where this track really hits for me is the added touches. So throughout the first say two and a half minutes, you're getting so many added sounds and often that being guitar sounds but you're getting so many and i would describe them as kind of ethereal tones coming in and i think mm. that's where it gets that kind of um a beautiful kind of otherworldly vibe to um to it to me and, and probably why i don't go with dower because i think my ears are pinging more into what that's doing and and, and what that's adding to it for me but again yeah just for me really like uh, mm. But yeah, I'm a I'm a huge fan of this song. I I, I I really, really, I think when I listen to this album, it's it's one of the songs I look forward to getting to. Yeah, as I said, as I said with the lyrics, so said you can look at them and go, oh, you yeah, know, they are. Oh, look, he's suicidal and yeah. keep the pins and stab them in. You know that sort of yeah. thing. So uh, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not so naive not but... to go. I understand, but I think. That that's where the craft of them as a band has always been for me, and I think why mm. they have kind of taken top spot for me and retained that for so long is that um, uh, talk about layering in on the music, which we'll get to more in later albums. But um, I, I just think the 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 depth and the the kind of poetic nature of the way that he crafts the lyrics, sometimes dealing with quite difficult subjects. Um, it just just has always been a real selling point for me. Mm. But yeah, as I said, as I was saying with the lyrics, you know, if if you've been in that place, you can look at that and go, yeah, he's talking about it, but not in a kill me now. It's a yeah, the struggle's real. Yeah, but you can get through it. I mean that that's the one thing with some of the lyrics and stuff on the other songs as well in the album. Yeah, a bit like with just that. Depending on your life experiences, it will depend on where you yeah, come yeah. from them lyrically. Because yeah. like with just the the whole you do it to yourself, you really do. That's what really hurts. A bit you know, in theory, could be if you've not lived through like a depression or had any sort of hardships and things like that. It could be a victim song. It's a you do it, you do it to yourself. Whereas if you've been there and you've lived through stuff and you can go, actually, no, it's an internal one of the you is me. Yeah. I put myself in that. So it, I mean, I think with with the lyrics and stuff, I mean, it, it does helps not the right word. Cause you know, that would mean that everyone should go through mental health issues. But if you've been there and you've done it, it will hit different. I, and I think there's something in the um, honesty of it, isn't there? Yeah. Like someone being open and honest. And of course, it's a snapshot of time, isn't it? You know, like if you fast, fast forward 10 years and not to say that everything will be better, but things will be different. Could be worse, could be the same, could be better. And, and you probably write that song again. Maybe it has a, a different le level of honesty to it. But where that word help i think is valid is i think hearing and and certainly at the time i mean let's frame this in in mid 90s um there wasn't a lot of talk was there around no. um mental health and uh, probably any talk that there was was much more i don't going to use the term derogatory but just it was a thing wasn't it like mental health then was uh, 
don't get me wrong, the care system was already failing miserably at this point, but it was still kind of perceived in media the way that it had been put forward of going and going, you're either crazy or you're not. There's no, and... there's no sort of, um, there's no nuance to it. There's no everyone struggling. It was, yeah, you know, like you're either fine or you're going to be put in an institution. And I think having people be honest about, and, you know, we talk about mental health, but just what you as a human being will struggle with or can yeah. be struggling with. Um, so no matter what the level of impact is, and we know for everyone, the experience is different. And for some people, it will destroy them. For some people, they can even get to the point where it, it's not very impactful. But we'll probably all at least experience this to a degree. Um, and, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I think it was important to me because I think it framed helped frame my view of the world and, and probably helped me to be more understanding of something that I had no understanding of. Mm. It's not something I had experienced at the time and partly I guess because of age and where I was in my life. But I think songs like this made me more open to go, it's not just about you, dickhead. There are other human beings and they're going through things <laughs> like this. And while you are motoring through life and doing uh what you're doing consider that there are other people who maybe can't do what you're doing or are ostensibly go back to what i said earlier about experiencing a different in the music they might even be doing exactly the same things as you but they're experiencing it in a very different way now i will put a caveat on this this was these sort of this sort of music was and, and radiohead as a band was the start of a long path for me I don't want to say I listened to this album in 96 and then suddenly I was a very round, well-rounded human being. <laughs> I was still a total dick bag for many, many years. But <laughs> I think without things like this, I think I probably wouldn't have been able to um, even, even kind of posit an understanding um, till way, way later than I was. And I think it really kind of helped me on the path of life. God, I went deep on this song. But yeah, I, I do think it's that sort of thing of going, you know, be it an album, be it a movie, be it TV, be it a book, be it life experiences with other human beings. So we always talk on here, don't we, about kind of uh, pop culture stuff. But there are other human beings on the planet and sometimes you learn through those people who are around you. But um, a lot of the time, I think it is that learn thing. I think it's... It's trying to find things that you enjoy, but that also, I'm going to say help you as a human being, but help you become, I don't know, a, a more well-rounded human? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that is Psychological Weekly by <laughs> <laughs> Seven and Lacey. So, as always, like, subscribe, ring the bells, yeah. comments down there. Um, if you need to talk to someone, talk to someone it's that that's just gonna be my thing on this one is you know if you suffer are suffering have suffered talk to people don't and if you don't, don't feel like it. and if you don't feel like you have anyone you do you might not know it but you do and write the way out to reach out to us if, we, if we've not done you nothing this watching it but you know <laughs> like if you need to if you ever need to reach out but reach out people people will help not everyone as I said, there's some dick bags out there, young me for one, but you know, reach out, speak to people. So, Mr. Seddon, what is next? Next up, we've album? got Black Star, and that's Black Space Star. The uh, final David Bowie album? Um, And also, I'm sure there's something else as well. I want to say there's something in a sci fi movie or, or, or film, but I, I'm. I'm struggling at the moment as to remember what it was, so ignore that <laughs> pop culture reference that may or may not exist. So, until next time, goodbye.